Good afternoon and welcome to Ljubljana in Slovenia for round three of the ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup. Well, it's finals time. We've had the semi-finals of the men's C1 and the women's K1 this morning. Now, here in Ljubljana, in perfect racing conditions, we are focused on the finals. The men's C1 category will get underway very shortly. 50 boats have now been whittled down to the final 10. Myself, Andy Maddock, and alongside me, Casey Eichfeld of the United States of America team will talk you through this final as it unfolds. And uh, 22 gates stand between the athletes and a place on the podium here on this Tartson Whitewater Center. Casey, from that semi-final, where are the places to watch on this 22-gate course? I would say all the way through gate one to six is super important to watch. We've seen people have a little bit of trouble coming down the drop, having low lines into the upstream in gate two. Uh, so there's a lot of time right there. And then getting a nice, good, clean bounce from gate three to the upstream four. And then more importantly, a good cross from four to the downstream gate five and making sure that you're you're oriented in a way that's going to let you get to gate six and then to seven um, in a good spot. We've seen a lot of time change hands in the middle section from 10 through 15. Uh, so those are going to be really key places to keep the boat nice and flat. Try and keep that momentum moving well. Stay ahead of the gates so you're not rushing your way into those, um, both from a time perspective, but also, more importantly, from a focus perspective. When you start to fall behind, you start to rush a little bit in your head, and then that's when things really start to unravel for a lot of athletes. And like we talked about during the semifinals, there's not a lot of time to be gained in the bottom. So we're going to see a lot of that, a lot of the, 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 the core paddling in the first 15 to 16 gates. Well, here is the start list, and uh, you saw the World Cup standings. Uh, well, Mate Benos of Slovakia, who was leading the standings, not in this final. Benjamin Sapsek was fastest for Slovenia in the semi-final. He goes off last, and great to see Mikhail Martikan of Slovakia racing. But here's some of the stats from the semi-finals, and, uh, well, it tells us a lot about uh, the tricky offset sequence, gate 11, and that little move, 4, 5, 6, that uh, created a lot of problems. So, 10 boats racing in this, the men's C1 final, led off by Slovenia's Andrzej Bercic, and the crowd are really excited here. Three boats in this 10-boat final from Slovenia. So, great expectations from the home crowd, and really tight into the upstream gate, too. Great start for Andrzej Bercic. Absolutely, had a nice little hop through his way down the drop, keeping pretty good speed on his way into two. He's got a good bounce into four, and now we're just going to wait to see this clutch move here. Getting a little held up, but nice little pump there and cleanly through five and six. Well, we know that uh, the fastest raw time in the semifinals was 84.97 seconds. Well, that counts for nothing now. They all start from zero, but it gives us an indication of the kind of time it will take to get on the podium here today. And uh, Andrzej Bercic is keeping it clean. No penalties, of course. Any touch of the poles with any part of your body, your boat or your paddle incurs a two-second penalty. And in this kind of tight final, that almost certainly would take you off the podium. Yeah, absolutely. He's delivering very well here. We saw that he was just a little bit late in 14, having to lean really far forward to avoid the touch. But that's not a problem so long as the focus holds together. Very clean in an 18. Well, and it, out. Look, it looks so smooth, so fluid, and uh, almost effortless. But sometimes that's where the quick times come from. Yeah, this is a very nice run. Well, it's going to be outside that 85 second barrier, but it's a great run from Andrzej Bercic of Slovenia. And, uh, well, the clock hasn't stopped, so we'll wait and see. But I think that was under 90 seconds. I think so as well, which is super respectable. How many times did we see in semifinals under 90? Uh, probably three, four, maybe okay. five times, but it's certainly in the top five kind yeah, of mix and, and clean. So I think that that definitely means we can't count it out as a medal run. Well, it's great as well. First down to get a quick time. It, it just puts the pressure on those two to come. Three-minute intervals. And, Casey, I mean, you were in the final last weekend in Bratislava. Do you take any late information? Do you listen out for what the people early on in the final are doing? I actually really don't. I don't want to know what the others are doing. It's a little weird um, with the loudspeakers because you can hear the commentators 
from just about anywhere at the venue. And for a lot of people, that can be a little distracting. It's not my favorite thing in the world. I've actually started paddling with headphones in for my warm-ups to just kind of try and avoid that. If my coach comes to me with some late information, then we'll discuss that and, and, uh, and come to an agreement. But other than that, I, you know, it's, it's better for me to just focus on me, uh, for me personally at least. Well, I'd agree. That's the, that's the main focus. But it's interesting as to if you do a, get a snippet of almost the time faster than anyone managed in the semifinal, it can really upset you. Yeah. Um, it's super important that you don't think too much in the time perspective. It's just about what you're doing while you're on the water. Great. Well, Andre Berchich's time confirmed at 88.84, so a great first rundown. Uh, next up for Italy, it is Roberto Colasingari, who's, uh, well, got a good reputation at under-23 world championship level. And uh, this is opportunity to make his name at the senior level in this final. The Italians, of course, well, we're not far from the Italian border. Certainly only about half an hour away from the border of Italy. And uh, I know, for example, Daniel Monlenti stole the party at the 2010 uh, World Championships here when uh, Peter Causa was the favorite to win. Uh, had to settle for second place behind Daniele Momenti, and he's up early on on the split time. But this, we know from the semi-finals, is where the time really changes wow, hands. Wow, and look at that. Ducking the head back into gate 10 saved him a lot of time. He had a really great cross there, keeping the, the height on the water so that he wasn't having to paddle his way back up. This is very, very nice. He had a very well put together first top of the ha uh, half of the course, and now it's all about holding it together, maintaining that two-second lead. This is very strong. This is this is competitive with uh, with uh, Sashek's run from the semifinals. Oh, and he's Ooh, tight ah, on 18. Wow. Very nice upstream in 18. Brilliant work. So Roberto Colasingardi of Italy is taking the fight to those still to come. Two more gates now to come on this 22-gate course. 88.84 is the time he's going to beat. He's going to be inside of that. It's just about how much. And in 87.48, great stuff. He knows he's done a good job there, and he's put himself right in the mix. 87.48. And, uh, well, where do you think he really uh, got that time from? Uh, he had an incredibly smooth top. You can see even just starting by coming down the drop, he had a really clean line. You see a lot of the athletes take a big hit in the hole. And the, kind of the goal is to make sure that you're up on the curler a little bit more rather than taking the meat of that hole because it's going to kill your speed. He also smashed gate 10, getting that really nice glide. He caught the top of the bubble that actually causes a lot of issues for other athletes, but he used it, surfed his way up into 10 so that he was able to just lean back pop his head into the upstream and then left and then had a very nice smooth line into 11 after that um, he did lose a little bit of time in the very bottom and that could have just been fatigue but it, then again he smashed the upstream 18 in the hole under the bridge and just a very well put together run so Roberto Colasingari of Italy leading ahead of Andre Bercic of Slovenia but eight boats to go in this the men's C1 final here at the third World Cup at Tarsen in Slovenia. And the next up is, our, well, a really exciting paddler because it is Nicolas Gestin of France, who is, uh, well, new to really this senior kind of exposure, but he's a junior world championships bronze medal. And uh, he did make two World Cup finals in 2018. What can he do? Can he actually get something together and put it on the podium? He's certainly capable of doing that here. But fighting early on, just uh, not quite getting the kick off the hole. Yep. And a, little, a couple of seconds low. A little bit of fight for sure. He he was going for that nice on top line on the curler, but that is a little bit of a double-edged sword because if you miss the stick from it, you are going to slide a little bit, and that was the, the cause of his low entry. So this is the move that caused problems in the semi-finals to a lot of paddlers, but uh, no problems there for Nicolas Gestin of France as he comes into the upstream gate eight, but uh, he is paying a bit of a price for being low on two and a little yep. bit low on four. Look at that, 6.25 seconds. But that's more of a reflection of how good Cola Zingari of Italy was on the top section. Absolutely. He did get a very nice bounce. Not quite as good as Roberto's, but it was quite nice uh, into, into 10. Definitely didn't lose time there. Keeping it smooth here. Well, he's a junior 
World Championship medalist, of course, for France. And France looking forward to hosting the Olympic Games in uh, Paris in 2024. And he's the kind of person who'll be right in the mix for his prime at that kind of stage. But he's picked up a two-second penalty on 17 and too tight into 18. Well, he's showing us some skills there, though. Yeah, nice little bit of action surfing there. I think that this this could be just a manifestation of the lack of experience at this level. Um, you know, he's a little bit wired up. He's a little jittery, probably a little tired at this point. There's not a whole lot of time for the athletes to recover between the semifinals and the finals. So fitness is a really big, important thing. We might not race for very long in the course, but you got to make sure that you, you got that, that high fitness level. Well, into third place for Nicolas Gaston of France. And uh, there we have it, Roberto Calazingari of Italy, standing firm at the top of the leaderboards. Seven boats still to go in this men's C1 final here at the third World Cup of the season. And a capacity crowd looking for something special from the Slovenians. Well, at the moment, lying in second place with Andrzej Berczyk, but still two boats of the seven to go are from Slovenia. But here's one to watch. Gregor Hedvig of Poland, who qualified through into the final with four seconds of penalties. He was the fastest qualifier in the semi-final last weekend in World Cup 2 in Bratislava. And uh, he's got the pace. Can he keep it clean? So we can see pretty good line there through the drop, but he did take a little bit of hit in the hole, so he lost some of that momentum to carry him into two. But he's still holding it very strong. This is a nice bounce into four. He's coming just a little bit low into the upstream because that up is quite close to the wall, so he's making sure that he doesn't uh, end up tapping the bow on there. A little hung up there, and that's going to be a lot of time. Oh, oh. oh that was two harsh. penalties back-to-back -back is going to be going to be a, a kiss of death unfortunately wow and you can see the focus is gone well unfortunately for Gregor Hedwig of Poland then that will be a 50 second penalty on the upstream and you could just see he was so so good in the in and out up to gate four but then he got held in the stopper on five and problems emerged from there and it's not going to be the podium today for Gregor Hedwig of Poland but he'll be pleased again that he's set some strong pace in yeah. those um, sort of re opening rounds of the competition. Yeah. So he will be probably a little bit concerned that uh, he's yet to deliver it in a final because I know he was in the final for the European Championships. He was in the final last weekend, again today, but he hasn't managed to convert those uh, strong performances in the early rounds. And whether that's something to do with the pressure, who knows? Yeah. I think what he just did with the rest of his run is a really good example of once you screw up, the pressure's gone. And he actually had a very nice, smooth uh, second half of the course. You know, it's just, it's balancing that focus. You know, you got to be flexible with whatever happens because you don't know how the race is going to turn out until everybody's gone. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lesson we all learn every time we're on the race course. Uh, none of us are, are really that immune to it. So the lead still is with Roberto Colazingari of Italy. 87.48 ahead of Ange Bercic of Slovenia. Nicola Gestin of France in third place. But uh, six boats still to go in this, the men's C1 final here in Tartsen in Slovenia. It's the third race of the five race ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup season. And on course for Italy, it is Stefano Cipressi. He's a world champion in the kayak and, uh, well, not a regular finalist, but he came through 
very tidily wow. in the semi-final, but what a hit on the very hole there. Very big hit. He did that bit so well in the uh, semi-final. Now he's got to refocus, hasn't he? Find the rhythm through this tricky section. Yep. A little bit of an extreme bounce there in that hole, but he got to the upstream okay. One of the really interesting things about uh, Stefano is that uh, before the C1 women were even uh, fully involved in the in the circuit, uh, he was already switching paddles uh, between left and right, and so it's uh, it was not a bandwagon thing, honestly, with him. You know, and, he, and he's proven proven that it's very helpful to him. Um, I think coming from his kayak background, it makes it a little easier to be confident, the, the, <laughs> confident and comfortable um, on both sides. I know for me, if I switch to the left-hand side, I am not very good. Well, let's watch as uh, Stefano comes towards the intermediate split. Look at that, nine seconds. Well, some of that was on the, uh, the main drop here, this stunning drop on this uh, Sava River. But uh, it's slipped away a little bit since then. He's just not quite found the rhythm. And uh, his compatriot, Roberto Colasingari, had uh, such good just flow. It looked like he made it, uh, well, it made it look easy. Yeah. So coming through to the finish, and it's going to be 96.24. It is good enough for third place at this stage in the competition. But uh, it's quite a bit off a place I would expect regarding the podium. Roberto Colasingari still leading for Italy ahead of Andre Bercic of Slovenia. Stefano Cipressi is there in third place and we're at the halfway point in this men's C1 final. Uh, very shortly we would hope to grab a word with the race leader Roberto Colasingari. Does he think it's going to be enough? 87.48 for a place on the podium and will it hold on to top spot we've got some big names still to come including Slavkovsky of Slovakia Martikan of Slovakia and of course the local favorites well Benjamin Savsek and, and Luka Bozic as well well Roberto we saw how excited you were after your run how do you feel now well I feel good and there is a still long way to go before the end of the final uh, there are so many good athletes that they did a better result than me in the semi-final, so we have just to wait, but I'm happy with my time, with my with my run, and that's all. It's been a little while since you've been in a final. Is it is it nice to be back here? Yeah, it's nice to be back in final, and uh, and it's nice to be uh, fighting for the medal and to try to, to find a good way to take a medal. All right, fingers crossed. Good luck. Thank you. Well, it's great to uh, see the young paddler, Roberto Colasingari, there, our race leader. Here we are after the first five competitors. We're at the halfway point. Slovenia, Andrzej Bercic is, uh, well, he's in second place at the moment. Still two Slovenian boats to come. And Stefano Cipressi, who we've just seen in third place. So it's Italy first and third, and Slovenia in second place. But uh, two Slovaks to come. And uh, six nations in this men's C1 final. The crowd here in uh, Tartsen uh, eagerly anticipating, eagerly hoping the Slovenians can get on the top spot. And uh, well, these clear waters on this crystal clear sunny day of the Sava River makes the water look very inviting indeed, Casey. Absolutely. I, we have such an incredible day right now. It's sunny, blue skies, just enough breeze to help you keep cool, but it's not messing with the gauge, which is really nice for the athletes. It's always sort of a, a pet peeve of ours because we do race in nature, and so we, you know, we have to accept those things to, to a certain extent. Right, we are underway with the second half of the final. Matja Marinic is on course for Croatia. 
2013 under 23 European champion. He won that on the big water of Borg Saint Maurice and uh, already a bit too tight into the upstream gate two. So a two second penalty picked up for that early touch, but uh, very smooth through four. This is where he could find that time. And he does indeed. He straight lines five, six, and seven. That's surely how to do it. This is very, very nice. It's always really good when you can minimize the amount that the boat has to turn because the straighter the boat is, the faster it's moving in that direction. Sometimes that's not really an option. Unfortunately, it seems we're picking up another two second penalty on gate nine, but he did have a great jump into the upstream gate 10. Opting for the spin on 11. Oh, taking that penalty with the elbow on the, uh, on the inside of the gate. Uh, the penalties are mounting up now, unfortunately, for the Croatian paddler. Six seconds of penalties, and uh, he was in touch on the early split, but I think we'll find out just in a moment. Look at that. He's still in touch on pace, but those six seconds of penalties surely put him well out of contention for a place on the podium with another penalty picked up on the downstream gate 17. It, for as an athlete, can be pretty frustrating to know that the technical skill is there, but then you make silly little mistakes like touching gates that isn't really necessary. I know for me personally, I feel like there are two types of touches. There are touches where I'm just not on the right line, and yeah, I couldn't avoid that gate. If I reach out and punch a gate, I'm more upset with myself because that was a completely preventable thing. Yeah, and disappointment there for Maciej Marinic of Croatia. Into fourth place, those eight seconds of penalties proving very costly indeed. So Roberto Colasingari of Italy still leading ahead of Andrzej Bercic of Slovenia. Stefano Cipressi for Italy in third place with four boats to go in this the men's C1 final. But of course, they are the fastest four boats from the semi-final. Two Slovenians, two Slovakians still to go. So we have a momentary pause before we go again. Three minute intervals between these competitors and the next up. Well, here's a paddler who's capable of delivering something special from Slovakia. He's the world number two. It's Alexander Slavkovsky. He was fifth last weekend in Bratislava. Disappointing 29th in Lee Valley. And last season, he won the overall World Cup title uh, with uh, four or five silver medals on the trot. Outstanding consistency. And, uh, well, he's delivered that pretty well. He was a bit sticky on the hole, but he's uh, rescued it, wrestled it back into position. Yeah, absolutely. He's had another nice bounce here from, uh, from gate three to four. Opting for the low line on the back side of the hole, and it worked out really well for him. A little tail tap on the bottom of the course there, but that's not too much of an issue. He's got nice flow here. Oh, but an unfortunate penalty on gate eight. Oh, yes, that's... Uh, deficit well 1.7 seconds now he has a deficit so he was virtually up on the split now he's got to find something special in this middle section he takes on the move forward through on 11 on his crossbow that sets him up nicely we'll just have to see how he can keep the boat running through this 14 15 sequence and he does that nicely yeah it's, it's looking very good technically he is very on at the moment uh, he's putting the boat where it needs to go. His lines are, are pretty much as short as they can be. Just needs to hold this together for the last five gates, and we might be able to see a metal, a metal potential run. Yeah, I'm starting to think he's outside of our race lead time here. It's whether he can get a medal, as you suggest, Casey. And the time is slipping away against the race leader and into third place. So 89.56 seconds for Alexander Slavkovsky. And the bottom section, he just let it slip away a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing because I say that there's not a lot of time to be gained, but there is time to be lost. So it's, a, it's, an, important, it's an important thing to, to, to hold on to that focus all the way through. So there we see, that was the penalty that Alexander took on the top part of the course. No doubt about that, a two-second penalty added to his time. And, well, 
without that, he would be lying just 0 0.08 seconds off the uh, race leader, Roberto Colasingari for Italy, and then Andrzej Bercic in Slovenia, uh, for Slovenia in second place, Alexander Slavkovsky for Slovakia in third. But by my calculations, that guarantees Slovenia a medal in this competition. But we still have three paddlers to go. And uh, there are the Slovenian fans. And I'm sure they'll be out in force tomorrow for Peter Kauser in that men's K1 semi final. I expect you need earplugs tomorrow, honestly. Well, it's always good. Always get a rousing reception here in uh, Tartson, just on the outskirts of Ljubljana in Slovenia. And well, here we are. The second of three Slovenian paddlers in this men's C1 final. Luka Bozic goes for gold as he comes over the big drop here. And uh, let's. Is he going to show us the line through there? Well, it's pretty sweet. It's tidy. And look how tidy gets out on the exit. Very, very, very smooth. And maybe a little bit risky on the exit there, just putting the shoulder right underneath the inside pole. Can be a little bit dangerous, because if you lift your body back up too early, you're going to run right into that gate. But he's doing it very nicely. He's got very good wherewithal. Oh, uh. Oh, and it looks like a 50-second uh, penalty 50 second for penalty. Luka Bozic of Slovenia. And that's a big surprise there. Uh, yeah, he just, uh, well, took a big hit in the hole, didn't he? Uh, got pushed back, and there was no real way back. He knew that he could paddle back round, but it, the time would would go anyway. So he's racing for pride here, and, well, he's, he can hold his head high. Yeah, I think he's looking for a raw time that's definitely competitive with the others. I feel for him a little bit. I believe that he was in the finals last year here as well. I think we had the World Cup finals here, and... Uh, he was in the finals and he flipped on the way to the last down. And it was it was heartbreaking. I really wanted to see uh, a great race from him uh, here, but as you can see, he's still putting together a very nice run. Well, he had the opportunity as well to take the overall World Cup race lead in this competition because he was third in Lee Valley in race one, and then he was fourth last weekend in Bratislava. So, in the final, he had the opportunity, but uh, we shall wait and see. And Luka Bozic of Slovenia. Disappointment for him, but uh, it is still Roberto Kolazingari of Italy leading the way ahead of Onze Bercic of Slovenia. Then uh, Alexander Slavkovsky of Slovakia. Wow, there we get a great view of uh, Luka going airborne into the first couple of gates on the course. That drop offers a lot of really good photo opportunities to see boats go completely airborne. And this, of course, where his hopes of a podium finish today just evaporated in the heat here in Slovenia. Looks to me like he just released that crossbow a little bit too early, but you know, you got to take the risk. You got to do what you got to think, what you think you need to do while you're on the course, because in the end, you know, you got to trust your instincts. So two boats still to go in this, the Men's C1 final, and uh, Roberto Colasingari of Italy is our race leader. He's guaranteed a medal, but what color is that gonna be? And uh, we've got some big names still to come. The final two boats are big names, and none come bigger than this man, Michal Amartikan of Slovakia. 40-year-old, five-time Olympic medalist. He's a four-time world champion and uh, hugely experienced, still capable of getting in the mix. And uh, well, it takes a bit of a hit on the hole there, a little bit low, but I think he's kept the boat speed. He's run the boat very nicely, so he minimized the amount of time that he lost as best as he could. This is a great bounce right here. A little bit high, and yep, that was what I was afraid of. Just got that nose caught on the wall a little bit. Opting for the low line, though, and pays off. Yes. Wow, that's very vintage. Nice. Vintage Martican. And great to see he's still capable of those moves. But it has he, yeah, he has taken a penalty there. And 3.8 seconds down as he comes into the middle section. And uh, well, how good would it be if Mikhail Martikan can get on the podium? I think he's up against it now, but he's certainly not giving up. Yeah, and that's really, really important. I mean, again, touching on just not letting up until the race is over because.
you know, you, you never know what's going to happen. And uh, he's definitely got the, the skills to, to put things together. Yeah, he's uh, shrunk the deficit a little bit on the second split, but it's still 3.3 down. He's going to have to do some Mardi Khan magic. Well, that's a, a good effort on 18. He will have trimmed a little bit of time there, but he's running out of time to find those margins. Mikhail Martikan now chasing 87.48 to win. He's outside of that time already. Can he get close to the podium? And only it's a fourth place for Mikhail Martikan. Uh, 91.67 seconds is his time. Disappointment there. I think uh, there's probably a lot of people thinking it, how good it would be to get uh, Mikhail Martikan on the podium here today. But a great performance there still. Under 90 seconds is runtime, but that two second penalty on gate eight has uh, proved costly. Kola Zingari of Italy is leading. Then Andre Bercic of Slovenia is in second. Alexander Slavkovsky of Slovakia is third with one boat still to go. The fastest boat from the semi final. So Slovenia already guaranteed a medal, but the final boat down is from Slovenia. Can they make it two medals? Can they make it a gold medal? Well, the only person that can take away the gold medal from Roberto Calazingardi of Italy is this man here, the 2017 world champion, Benjamin Savsek, trains here on this course, lives very close to here. This as he goes for gold here in the final of the Men's C1 World Cup. I'm jittery right now, honestly. Well, Benny Sabsek would be a popular winner if he manages to do it. But 22 gates stand in the way, but that's a good start for him in this competition. A little bit more in the hole than maybe you would have liked. Ah, yep. Yeah, so again, that's what happened to Mikhail Martikan. Uh, just caught the bowels, but uh, nicely through five, six, and seven. So will he have a bit of a deficit to chase? Well, we'll find out as he exits the upstream gate eight. It's close, and uh, well, he's in touch. Savsek of Slovenia is uh, in touch with a place on the podium for sure. Absolutely, and we remember how fast that semi-finals run of his was, so we know he knows how to pick up speed and where he's going to get it. A little bit caught up in gate 11 there, but this is moving really nicely. Quick little, wah, reaches out, just like we were talking about earlier, those, those silly touches where you just reach out and punch a gate unnecessarily. Yeah, it just looks like he snatched at it a little bit. He knows he's a bit under pressure on the split time, and he's now 3.8 seconds down. And, uh, well, there's a risk he won't get on the podium here. So uh, he's really got to keep his focus on the bottom part of the course. Benjamin Savsek now, three gates to go, and he's outside the race lead time now. And he's fighting for a place on the podium into fourth place for Benjamin Savsek of Slovenia. And, uh, well, that's a big surprise. I think everyone had Benny at least for a podium finish. Yeah, absolutely. I have to say, though, I am so excited for Roberto. I am not positive, but this might be his first World Cup medal, but to have a World Cup gold is fantastic. This is really, this is a huge confidence booster and really great and going to help him moving forward. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get a word with him very shortly at the finish line, but Roberto Colasigari of Italy provisionally takes the gold here in Slovenia ahead of Andrzej Bercic. So the Slovenians do get a silver medal. And then Alexander Slavkovsky of Slovakia takes the bronze medal. Mikhail Martikan, fifth place. And the young Nicolas Gestin of France takes eighth place. So, but here we go. Benjamin Savsek, the favorite surely for this race, the world champion of 2017 not to be on this occasion, but still fourth place. It's, uh, it's good for those overall ICF World Cup point standings. <laughs> you can see Roberto is very happy. 
It's your first medal, first World Cup medal. It's a gold medal. Congratulations. Yeah, I don't know how I feel, but seems that I feel good. There is all my team here cheering for me, and yeah, it was good. I couldn't do bad, bad with the number ten of Francesco Totti. <laughs> Did you feel during the run that it was going well for you? Well, uh, uh, at least it was like uh, the first part was not so good. It was just a little bit under control. And then when I, I was in the flow and I said, OK, just go ahead and go fast. And the water was with me today. And that's that's and that's our sport. And that's luck sometimes. Well, the luck's shining on you. Congratulations. Enjoy the gold medal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Roberto. There we are. Vet. Gold goes to Italy. Roberto Kolasingari ahead of Andrzej Bercic of Slovenia. Alexander Slavkovsky of Slovakia takes the bronze. And uh, final reflections there, Casey, on that men's C1 final. It was a very exciting final to watch. I'm super excited to see a number of younger athletes uh, in these finals and to, to really put it down. Roberto had a great race um, showing that uh, you know he's really he's really coming up and um, it's just super exciting to watch you know like I said the water is master and uh, and you, you just have to work your best with it uh, and like he said you know the water was with him today he uh, he was able to pull it really well the other athletes put in a great effort uh, I was a little a little disappointed not to see Benji Savchek throw down a little bit faster I think he, he could have even beaten the semi-final run but you know, it was a super exciting race. I was glad to see two Italians in the finals as well. Um, and like I said, these young guns. Well, thank you, Casey, for joining me in the commentary box. Up next will be the women's K1 final. I'll be back just in a few moments time. Stay with us for the women's kayak final. So there we have it, the standings after three races in this men's canoe competition. Luka Bozic of Slovenia takes the lead ahead of Matej Penos, who uh, didn't make it through into the final today. Benjamin Savcek of Slovenia in the third place. And, uh, well, some big names in there and a close competition. Of course, this is race three of five and double points up for grabs in race five, the World Cup final. That's in Prague in the first weekend in September. And after this weekend in Ljubljana, we'll be taking a break until the end of August for the uh, World Cup 4, and that's in Markleberg in Germany. But let's turn our attention to the women's K1 final. Um, we've got an exciting lineup here. Myself, Andy Maddock, uh, and now alongside me, joining me is Amber Maslin from the British team. So welcome, Amber. Thanks, Andy. Nice to be here. And uh, here are the standings. Well, Ricarda Funk is not here. So she is the leader after the first two races. Uh, Jessica Fox is a surprise omission from the final. Doesn't make it through, which was a big shock in those semi-finals. Yeah, it's a super hard course here on the semi-final and finals course. Um, we saw some really surprising people miss out. Um, but it's super changeable water, really difficult course. But we've really seen some people fly through. So here is the start list. Ten boats, and they go in reverse order. So Stephanie Horn of Italy will be going off last as the fastest from the semi-finals and well will she be boosted by the success just now of Roberto Colasingari so here are some of the statistics from that semi-final and it looks like the big problems were around gate 14 in that uh, tricky offset sequence and then well a few 50s on gate 5 and 6 and that was where Jessica Fox the world number one 
was uh, eliminated in the semi-finals. Yeah, we've seen some tragedies on gate five, six. Um, it's a difficult stag. You have to run all the way to the end of the stopper and pull around. But we're about to see Martina Wegman uh, take first boat off the finals. Well, it's great to see a Dutch paddler. The Netherlands represented in this 10-boat final. Not really a country you associate with white water. But, uh, in fact, Martina, very, very comfortable. The bigger the white water, probably the more comfortable she is on it. Yeah, Martina has such a nice feel for the flow. Um, she really is awesome on Tassin. She's working with Telmo um, of Spanish K1, and uh, they seem to be working really well together. So we're just going to see her coming into this really difficult move, and she's absolutely nailing gate five, backing off to gate six, and pushing through gate seven. This is really nice so far, really good start. Well, it's an indication of the uh, the timings. Then it took around about 93 seconds in the semi-finals to uh, win the semi-finals. So that's the kind of time we'd be looking at. Martina is looking tidy as she comes into the upstream gate 10. Yeah, she's a little low in gate 10, but she's really keeping it together. So far, this is a really great start to her finals. Um, we're going to see her go forwards here, I think, in gate 11, and then set up nice and wide for the next dagger. Well, she looks really fluid, really smooth and working with the white water. And uh, that boat's tracking very nicely. This gate 14, this was a big gate, so I think it needs to be repainted between the semi-finals and finals. So much was it hit, but uh, no problems there for Martina. Yeah, Martina's having such a smooth run. If she can just keep the speed on the boat, I think we'll look at a really nice time. That was so nice through gate 18. She can be super stoked with that. She can just hold the space around gate 19. Really nice again, just needs to pick the speed up for the last three gates. Here we come through gate 20, 21 and 22. The course design here at the bottom, not particularly technical at the bottom, but so important to get the lines right and into first place. Obviously, it's the first <laughs> boat down, but under 100 seconds, 99.09. And uh, justifiably, Martina, that's a great run there. Yeah, she can be really proud of that run. That was really nice. She did all the difficult moves really well and um, really kept the speed of the boat the whole way down. That's super stoked to see that. And here's the move that she really delivered, five, six, seven. Yes, she had to be a bit reactive, but I think that is the nature of that move. You've got to attack it. You've got to react to the water to make it work. And uh, we've seen a few people our full victim to gate five, six and seven over the course of the semi-finals and finals. Yeah, it's so easy to turn to early to get back for gate six, but the stopper there is so powerful. You really have to make sure that you're patient enough to run all the way to the end of the stopper and keep your boat flat, which is difficult when it's such a highly technical move. I'm really interested to see how some of the K1 ladies are going to approach gate 9 to 10. Um, we've seen a lot of people go underneath the left pole, and I do wonder if we're going to see anyone using the right-hand curl um, to stay on top of the water there. It's a difficult jump under the left, but I think we may see some more people using the water now. So next to start, Cindy Purcell of Germany. As you saw from the caption, a silver medalist from the Under-23 World Championships back in 2012. And such is the competition for place in the German senior team that... Uh, the opportunity to start in a World Cup don't come around that often, but she has taken that opportunity and qualified into this final. Yeah, she had a really nice semi-final run. Um, she was a little heavy going into the first upstream there, but I think we're seeing her staying composed. Uh, she's sliding off the back of the stopper here. It's really hard to keep your boat up on the wave there because you have to stay completely flat, and it's a, quite a stressful move. If it's yeah, it's final. difficult. You can see she almost leant back a bit on the blade, and uh, the bows, the weight was off the bows, and, uh, well, problems there. She's deliberately missing six and seven in order to go back for gate five but uh, that will still penalize her in a big way on the clock yeah that will really cost her um, that's tragic it's such a difficult piece of water to go through especially when you're under such a massive amount of pressure so she does recover through five six and seven but uh, the damage is done and i fear there is no way back to the podium for that kind of uh, loss 17.29 seconds for Cindy Purcell of Germany. Yeah, she'll just be wanting to put down a run as good as she can make it now and just show her skills and what she can do on this amazing stage in Tassen. Well, let's just reflect on this section here because this section through 11 through to 17, the downstream section is relentless. The athletes, if, they, if you get behind on one gate, it just continues to tighten up. Yeah, we saw um, Evie Leithbeth uh, from the USA go forwards in gate 14 in the uh, semi-finals, which was amazing. Um, she's such a small light paddler, I think she can really use the water to her advantage here in Tassin. 
Well, there's a penalty as well to add to the tally for Cindy Perschel. Just a bit too tight on the upstream gate 18. And uh, they'll paddling out the run. It's not going to be today for Cindy Perschel of Germany as she uh, navigates through to the finish line. Yeah. So it is Martina Wegman of the Netherlands who still is leading the way. And that's a respectable time, 99 seconds. And uh, depending on how the paddlers uh, still perform, then uh, we could see that certainly in the top half of the final. Yeah, for sure. I think Martina will be pretty safe. For, she might be quite close to the podium because we're seeing a lot of people having trouble in gate five, six, seven. You know, they're really not easy to navigate, especially under this kind of pressure. Um, I think also because the water changes here so much, um, being able to read and adapt to what's happening in front of you can uh, be really difficult here. Some great shots of uh, just how powerful the white water is here on this Tartsen course, particularly down that legendary top drop. Uh, if you get into gate two and you get out cleanly, then you're on a good run. Yeah. <laughs> so next to take on the challenge from the Ukraine, it is Victoria Urs. She was 12th at the Olympic Games in uh, 2016 in Rio. And uh, of course, this is Olympic qualification year. The World Championships present the first opportunity for nations to qualify their boat quota places. And uh, that takes place at the end of September. A lot of people focusing on that. But uh, Victoria's had a great start to her run. Yeah, she's really with the flow here uh, from gates two to three. Oh, and she's just smashed the stagger. That was so fast. It'd be really cool to see if she can hold this speed the whole way down the run. She's picked oh. up a touch on gate five, but I think it'll be okay if she can keep the speed because she's really running the boat nicely at the moment. Well, that was stunning on the top. I reckon there'll be a few men's kayaks looking at that on the video, preparing for tomorrow's semi-finals to see how she did that. But Victoria Urs, 4.1 seconds up on the split. Yeah, and, and she got really tight into gate 10 there as well. That was super good to see. So it's great to see her attacking this course because uh, that's not something I would necessarily associate with Victoria. She's often quite conservative paddling, but she's taken this final by the scruff of its neck and uh, she is keeping it flowing as she comes down to the bottom section and has held the advantage. Yeah, she's holding the speed here. Um, this section's a really hard one to keep the speed on the boat because you have to cross at least three eddy lines. Um, so it's super hard to keep a sprint on, but she's gone through this up really safe, really nice. Um, we've seen her put down some really good runs before, um, and this season's been a little tough. Some of the courses have been really hard, but she's really nailing this. I think we're going to see her go into the lead. Well, I think you're right, Amber. And uh, now, coming down to the finish line, what kind of time will it be? Well, that's a oh. great time. That's 95.04. Don't forget that includes a two-second penalty, and Victoria, she takes a while to, uh, to recognise that, but yet... Yeah justifiably pleased that's the fastest raw women's kite time of the day yeah she was so fast you couldn't believe it at the bottom but again she wasn't pushing the whole way it hasn't special because when you're really with the flow and the water is super nice and um, everything's for free you don't really have to sprint in too many places there's some opportunities to get more uh, speed back on the boat by sprinting but most of it's just keeping with the water well victoria us leads for the ukraine ahead of martina wegmanov the netherlands and Cindy Perschel of Germany. But uh, seven boats still to go in this, the women's K1 final here in Tartsen in Slovenia, in the sunshine. And well, what racing we are being treated to. The uh, crowds here anticipating big things from the Slovenians. And of course, we do have a Slovenian still to come in this women's K1 final. Already one medal for the home country can they make it too yeah as well as the local slovenians we have a uh, couple of austrians racing and they do spend a lot of time here on tassin so we can maybe think about counting them as locals <laughs> well it's not that far away to uh, i guess the city of like klagenfurt in austria so uh, again pretty local familiar here but it's the two-time world champion karina kunler of austria on course and of course the winner from last weekend's competition in Bratislava, the second World Cup race of the season. And, uh, well, a little bit sticky, but uh, she looks like she's really taking this on. Yeah, she's really attacking the course. Connie has a really distinctive style. It's very um, technical and with the water, but she can also really put a good sprint on. She's really flying through the stagger now. That was really nice speed she had through there. So she was fifth in the Rio Olympic Games in uh, 2016 and uh, yes. will be looking to uh, go better than that. But she's got to qualify through to Tokyo. 
and she is in touch 1.17 that's uh, very very achievable yeah, you saw her keeping a lot of angle on the boat there to make sure that she stayed high in gate 10, and then she's got a really nice run through gate 11. This is shaping up to be a really nice stagger for her. So she's got to stay ahead of the game there. She's got to be good on 14, and she is oh. able to take it on forwards. And Connie definitely is uh, finding the groove. She didn't really find that on the semi-final. And look at that, she's closed the gap. 0.19 now the deficit, and if she can do this really tight on 18, she's right in the game. She's really tight on gate 18, but she's controlling it really well. She's got a really nice feel for the water here. She managed to gain a bit of speed back in the middle section. was really impressive, a really tight stagger, so she managed to put more speed on the boat there. Just going to see what time she's going to finish up with. She's just navigating these last couple of gates. Well, I, think I think we're looking at a new race leader here. It's going to be close, and it's oh. outside of that. So Karina Kunla of Austria goes into second place, and Victoria Urs of the Ukraine holds on to that gold medal spot at the moment. Martina Wegman of the Netherlands in third place. And, uh, well, how tight is that? Just uh, four one hundredths of a second. Yeah, I'm so impressed already because it's such a difficult course. I thought we'd see much wider margins in the K1 Women's Final. Um, but so far, everyone's really nailing that difficult stagger at the top. We've had a couple of casualties of Tassin, but um, at the same time, this is so impressive. The standard's going up every year. Well, I think that's where Karina lost it in the upstream 18. She was just a little bit too early on, the, and she had to wait for it. Yeah. And uh, as Amber's just pointed out to me that uh, a little asterisk just showing on Karina's time. So that just means the result is still provisional. Provisionally in second place, but one thing's for sure, Victoria Us of the Ukraine is our race leader. Six boats still to go. Yeah, Victoria has put down a 93.04 with a two-second penalty, so it's still the fastest we've seen so far, but next we've got Evie Leifbath. Uh, she's 15 years old from the USA. Um, she's got a really distinctive style, um, and it's super confident, super non-hesitant through the course, so I'm really excited to see what she can do. Well, let's watch, because, yeah, she's uh, in her second World Cup weekend of her career, and uh, last weekend she made the final in C1 and in the kayak, and again, this weekend, she has made it into the final. And in the C1 event, she is in the semi-final. So this attacking style, as you say, distinctive. And she races without fear. That would be my experience of uh, having watched her. Yeah, you can see her really working hard to get back up to the top of the eddy there. Because um, she's such a light paddler that she can go with the flow um, a little easier than some of the heavier paddlers might be able to. That was very tight through gate five there. Um, we'll see what the... Well, let's uh, watch her as she comes into the upstream, and unfortunately a 50-second penalty, and uh, certainly we may well get a shot of a better camera angle on that, because we certainly saw that when we watched Jessica Fox in the semi-finals. There was a, a really useful camera angle that uh, presented, uh, a, well, the judges the perfect opportunity to give fair judging. But uh, Evie, let's follow this down, because just watch the way she is paddling. She's attacking the course. This is the move she took on forwards. It's not going to be forwards on this occasion yeah you can still see her attacking as hard as she can she's trying really hard to get through all the gates she's trying to put her speed back on the boat it's so cool to see someone so young already learning these lessons that you're able to try as hard as you can even after a, de a devastating penalty well this is the opportunity to feel good on 18 one of those moves where if you get it right then you come out with a smile on your face yeah <laughs> Oh, she's sweeping the last upstream gate 19. Yeah, she's still trying really hard to get that speed back on the boat. It's super cool to see. She really did nail some of those moves as well. It's a really difficult course, and some more experienced paddlers are still having trouble on it. So, Well, yeah, as you say, respect to Evie Leapfarth of the United States of America. Into fifth place. It's not going to be in the podium for her, but uh, in her second ever World Cup race at 15 years of age, what a performance as she makes another World Cup final. So Victoria Urs leading ahead of Karina Kunla and Martina Wegman. And we are at the halfway point in this women's K1 final here in Tarsen, Slovenia. Sun is shining. Look at the white water, this crystal clear mountain water. And let's hope we can get a little interview down at the finish line with our current race leader, Victoria Urs, who put in that race lead time, which includes a two second penalty.
Well, Victoria, we're halfway there. You're number one. How do you feel about that? I'm very happy to stay here. I'm very happy to race in the final and I'm happy with my run. Did you think the time was, was good? Are you happy with that as a competitive time? I don't know. I'm just happy about my run and uh, we will see. How many times have you been in the finals in the last few years? It's first time. <laughs> so how does that feel in to K1, be in, a... in K1 first time? So how does that feel to be in a final for the first time? I'm happy. Yeah, I just uh, made a good run and uh, finally I made a good run. So that's, I'm just happy. Keep your fingers crossed. Good luck. Thank you. Well, great stuff there. Our race leader Victoria Urs at the halfway point. Here we are on the graphics. And that includes a two-second penalty. And, well, she's delivered when it matters. She's waited patiently to make the final, and she's seized that opportunity. Yeah, it's so cool to see how tight the leaderboard is at the moment. Um, it's such a technical course. I really thought there'd be more margin between first and fifth place. Um, we've seen people either absolutely smash that stagger or have a devastating penalty on it. So I'm really excited to see what the next five girls can do. Yeah, and, of course, they're the fastest of the women's K1 paddlers from the semi-final and they include some big names from around the globe. Yeah, Steffi Holm won the heats as well, I think. Um, so she's had a great weekend so far. We'll just see if she can hold on to that. But she's obviously extremely comfortable on Tassin, like really feels at home here on the water. We've just seen her comrade uh, win the C1 as well. I was standing next to Daniel Momenti and he roared. <laughs> Well, Daniel Momenti, of course, now coaching. He's the Olympic champion of 2012 in the men's K1, now coaching the Italian team. And, uh, well, he made this course his home as well. He won the world title in 2010 on this course. And it was only just uh, half an hour or so down the road for him. Well, let's turn our attention to our first competitor for the Czech Republic in this 10-boat final. It's Veronika Vojčova. And uh, chasing that time, remember, 95.04 is the time to meet, to take gold here at the moment. Verka's coming up really nice onto that right-hand curl. You need to control your nose to make sure it goes as close to the wall as possible without actually hitting it. See, she's like losing her nose a little upstream there, but dealing with it really well. She's coming back out onto the flow, trying to get some speed left to right through this next dagger. Oh, oh, that's a good line into four, because you don't want to be too tight. We saw you can uh, catch your bows on the uh, rock on four and great line there oh, she yes. almost could have dealt that forwards but hesitated momentarily no problem really yeah she took a really uh, no risk line there that was really great to see she really smashed through the left side of the stopper and got through that second clean so we'll see what kind of speed she can hold through the next part well she's done nothing wrong on the top section but that highlights just how good victoria Urs was on that top section two seconds down on the split but very much in control here as she comes into the offset sequence. Yeah, super smooth through gate 11, making sure that she's staying nice and wide for this next dagger. Perhaps she'll take her, uh, I think she's a little wide to go forwards on 14, but we'll just see her control it on the spin and come back out onto the float. This next part's the hardest part to keep your boat speed. You'll see that she needs to re-accelerate after gate 16. Well, she's closed the deficit a little bit, one and a half seconds down. She's now got to be tight into this upstream gate 18, and tight she is. Nice. That is good. She's now really running out of time to close the gap. And she oh, goes for glory and she delivers it. Yeah, she really smashed that last upstream. We'll just see if she can sprint to the finish through this part. I think we may see a new race leader. She's going to have to put the gas on to get through that finish lane. And not in first, not in second, but third. Third place for Veronica Pochova of the Czech Republic. And, uh, well, it slipped away a little bit at the bottom section, but it's a good run there and put in contention. And we've got... Well, we're already in a really tight battle and we still have four boats to go. 95.04 is the race lead time. Victoria Urs of the Ukraine leading ahead of Karina Kunla of Austria. And now Veronika Wojcova of the Czech Republic sitting in third. Yeah, four think, still to go. I think Verka really got through that first stopper move, the nicest out of anyone we've seen. But um, normally in Tassin, the first split doesn't matter too much. You can have some trouble on the drop, but I think... The standard is going up so fast that actually here you have to nail everything. Because Victoria Uz's run was almost completely perfect. So, Well, we're live from Tartson in Slovenia. Myself, Andy Maddock, and alongside me, Amber Maslin. And we are watching the women's K1 final unfold. And the unfolding it is because we still have four boats to go and already tight, tight, tight at the top.
And the next boat to start is uh, the exciting paddler Anna Shatila of Brazil, who uh, will always attack the course. I would say she's quite a high risk taker, but uh, well, we're the benefactors of that when we watch her attack the course. If it works for her, oh. it could be good, but look at the big hit she takes on the run into gate one. Uh, she's a super strong paddler, so she's coping with that really well, but that was it really heavy through the drop move. To see if she can stay on top of this stopper for the cross, and really nice and tight into gate, ah, taking a touch of the nose on the outside pole of four. It's not easy to keep the nose down in that situation. Well, Anna now has the opportunity. She can't afford to. If you lose the speed there, we've seen it's very easy to get pushed away from gate five. She does recover it well, but the time will be ticking away. It'll be interesting to see just how much time she's lost, but I suspect it's going to be eight seconds or so. It is 8.17 seconds down, and uh, we're only on gate nine to ten, so she's oh, low again. No. Oh. Uh, such a hard move, you know, it's not really with the flow on that section and she's just touched gate 21, so, uh, not 21, 12. Um, so, so sadly for Anna Shatila, then uh, she had the time loss at the top, but the real problems ended there. She is going to go back for the upstream gate 10, but uh, it's not going to be a podium finish for Anna on this occasion. Yeah, unfortunately, once you've touched a gate that's behind uh, all the other gates that you've navigated, uh, they become dead, so they are 50s. Uh, that's a good point. That is a good point. Uh, she perhaps needs to look at the rule book, just as I, I need to remind her. Yeah, so, I th she probably just wants to finish her run in the best way she can. So Anna Satila of Brazil. Well, worth just recognising, you know, she's been a real trailblazer for the... Uh, Brazilian team. She won their first ever world championship medal in 2017. That was in the women's canoe event. And we'll see her in action on that women's canoe event tomorrow. And you too can follow that here on Planet Canoe, nine o'clock Central European time. Then we'll be in action with the women's canoe and the men's K1 semi-finals, and then midday Central European time. We have those uh, finals tomorrow. But Anna Shatila finishing her run and into seventh place. So Victoria Us of the Ukraine is uh, sitting at the top of the leaderboard ahead of Karina Kudler of Austria and Veronika Vojtova of the Czech Republic. I think there's a really good chance we'll see Victoria Us come away from, with a medal. Um, she had such a perfect run, you know, she had one touch, but still her time was so fast, you know. Um, I think she could be so proud of that. So next to start from Austria, it is Victoria Wolfhardt, a two-time under-23 European champion. And, uh, well, you would expect her to put in something special. She was finalist in uh, Bratislava last weekend, finished ninth in the final of the uh, second World Cup. And uh, what wow, a great line there oh, through the drop into the upstream gate two. Yeah, she kept her nose down with the curl, um, so it fired her really nicely into gate two. This next section is difficult because the water's all going left and you have to make sure that you have some speed going the other way, but she's done that so nicely, coming in nice, ah, taking a touch on gate four. Um, but we'll see her, how well she can do this stop and move. Her nose is a little upstream, but she's coping with it really well, making sure she's backing off to gate six. So it's a solid top section. Remember, Victoria Urs of the Ukraine did have a penalty as well. She has that included. So if Victoria can get around, well, 193 seconds, really, then uh, she could still be in the mix for the top spot of the podium. And, uh, well, a little bit low on 10. And this is where you can't afford to uh, give away any margins on the course. Yeah, gate 10 is a really heavy move. You have to jump over this huge curl on the left-hand side. Um, we've seen a couple of people struggle with it. Uh, but again, Victoria Ousa set such a difficult time to beat that you can still have a pretty good run and be down on the split. So it's Victoria Urs against Victoria Volfart. But look at that. Five seconds is now the deficit. And, uh, well, that highlights just how supreme Victoria Urs was in the middle section. And uh, Volfart now not even really in contention for a medal, and she's not done a lot wrong. No, uh, she had quite a nice run through the, the, the bottom half. It's really hard to keep boat speed there. Um, I think she's made up a bit of time, but I don't think it'll be enough to challenge him for a medal. And into fifth place for Victoria Volfart of Austria. And, uh, well, Austria still in second place with Karina Kunler. But it is Victoria Urs 
clinging on to her paddle and she knows she's got a medal but we don't know what color it is yeah So there we saw the touch early on. Gate four, here's another angle of it. The bows of the boat taking that touch on gate four. Two seconds of penalties added on. And well, how quickly you can uh, start to lose that rhythm and start to slip away from contact with the podium. But the Slovenian fans are warming up. The grandstand is very full here with eager anticipation. Slovenia have already taken a silver medal in the men's C1 competition. And next up, we have our sole Slovenian representative in this, the women's K1 final. The Slovenian crowd's great. They're so dynamic. They're so in touch with what the paddlers are doing. You can see that slalom's a huge sport here. Uh, they're really involved in what's going on, so it's super cool to see. So let's introduce her, Eva Tersel of Slovenia goes up next and uh, well is very capable of delivering a good run she's made the final in all three World Cup races seventh and eighth in the first two races of the season and uh, well she bounces off the wall a little bit on the top section but no problems there on the first part of this course yeah it's not always a bad thing to touch the wall there because it means you're really in touch with the curl she's coming super tight into gate four and really hitting the wall a little with her nose but she's keeping the speed on the boat see how she does this move on the stopper it's so hard once your nose is too much up there because then you have to back off for this game that was really fast through that section though she's really putting on a show for the crowd now superb on the top section don't forget yes. she managed 93 seconds in the semi-final and 95 is our current race lead, so she's a little bit down, but importantly, she is keeping it clean. And this is her opportunity now to excel in front of her home crowd and find a little bit of extra horsepower from all that noise behind her. Yeah, she's really keeping the speed on the boat here. Uh, this is looking really nice. You can see that she's able to attack as well as managing the gates. So she's coming, trying to keep the speed through this next section. It's super hard to get in those back down. She's up on the slight by 0 0.12 seconds. Wow, the crowd are going wild here. We're looking at a virtual race leader as she comes into 18. She oh. delivers that move. Ava Tursell surely is on track for a podium. Yep. Can she go quickly enough to yep. get onto the top spot? She's going so safe through the last up. I think we'll see her really put the gas on now, making sure that she's like nice and through the middle of the gates. She just needs to sprint to the finish, but I think we're going to see a new race leader. And yes. Boom <laughs> into the race lead. I think that deserves a boom. Eva Tursell of Slovenia, uh, justifiably a smile on her face. 94.39. A clean run and delivers the expectations of the local crowd. Well, that's a guaranteed medal for Slovenia. They don't know what color it's going to be. And once again, it's going to be, well, potentially Italy against Slovenia for that gold medal. Yeah, this is really great to watch. It's such a tight final. Um, the standard's really gone up. You know, we're missing a couple of big names, but the girls are still rolling out the skills. It's awesome to watch. So let's just recap now. Ava Tercel of Slovenia leading this women's K1 final ahead of Victoria Urs of the Ukraine. Karina Kunler of Austria is in third place. Um, we have one boat still to go in this women's K1 final. And of course, she's the fastest boat from the semi-finals and the heats, actually, for that matter. Yeah, we'll see what Steffi can do. There's a little bit of time in Ava's run, as we can see from the first section. So if Stephanie can have an absolute stormer at the top and hold on to that speed through the bottom. I think we may see a new race leader, but this isn't easy going last off in the final. So the time to beat, 94.39. That's the time to beat to take gold. Stephanie Horn of Italy goes for gold here in Slovenia. And over the drop, great angle there as you drop over the lip of this course and launch down into gate two. Yes. Yeah. Good start for Stephanie. Yeah, really nice into the first upstream there. She's holding this speed on, and we can just see it that she's coming left to right and through this gate. Yeah, she's on top of the stopper. She's making sure that her nose is down for gate four, and then she'll carve back out onto the stopper for gate five, six, seven. Wow, that was supreme. She was really experienced there. She knew she had to come off. She watched the bows of the boat on the uh, on the pole, and uh, she has definitely delivered this top section so far. Yeah, I think she lost a bit of time in the stopper there, but she actually managed it really, really well, and she's just going to make sure that she can hold on 
Still need a second down. Eva was more down than that on her run, so if Steffi can keep accelerating through this next section, really nice into gate 10. This is shaping up to be a really fast run. Well, it is, and this is where it matters. Nice through 11. Now comes through 12, and you really get an indication on 13 to 14. If you can take it on forwards, you're ahead of the game, but she's, well, she's not doing forwards, but she is all right, as long as that wasn't a touch. Yeah, this is looking fast. She's taking speed off. She's half a second up on what she was before. Um, we see she's really accelerating through this section. Really nice to see. She can smash this upstream. Ah, a little heavy in the stop, but really nailing that stop. Well, Stephanie Horn is the only person that can spoil the Slovenian party here in Tartson because it looks like it might be slipping away. We'll have to wait and see as she comes towards the finish line. No, maybe not. Oh, she's she's found win. some time and she is going to take... <laughs> Gold for Italy. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie Horn does a double gold for Italy here in Slovenia. Oh, and the Slovenians take a silver medal again. Ava Tursel and Victoria Us of the Ukraine takes a well-earned bronze medal. Yeah, well, just, your reflections there, Amber. It is art and the asterisk on Stephanie's name has just come off. Uh, that's super cool to see two Italians winning and also super cool to see Stephanie winning the heats, semis and finals. There's a little bit of uh, stigma around winning the heats and semis. It's very difficult to start a final in that way, but um, she held on to it. That was amazing paddling we've just seen. And the top five girls the top four girls within one second of one another so well what a final here in Tartson in Slovenia and it is Stephanie Horn of Italy who takes gold and of course we've already seen Roberto Colazingardi take gold in the men's C1 event so a great day for Italy but a great day for Slovenia as well they took silver in the men's C1 and they've now taken silver with Ava Tercel in this women's K1 event and well Victoria Urs that's a, a great result there for her and well she uh, was capable of getting the gold medal there she that includes a two-second penalty she gets yeah, the bronze I just had the fastest time of the day so far in women's K1 um, so she can be super stoked with that I imagine that she's a little upset about the touch uh, because she would have not just been in gold she'd have been a second and a half up in gold so well there we have it that's the result Stephanie Horn of Italy confirmed with gold for Italy again a second gold of today Ava Tursel of Slovenia Victoria Urs and then we've got the likes of Karina Kudler of Austria the winner from last weekend she comes fourth and uh, well, well. Uh. Stephanie you are fastest in the heats fastest in the semi-finals fastest in the final that is incredibly consistent paddling well done yeah I'm so happy because I really love Tatsun Radom and Tatsun uh, it's Incredible, it's my first win on the World Cup and finally I reached uh, to take to keep the passion and <laughs> Did you feel any pressure because you've been paddling so well uh, and in the early races? Did you feel pressure in the final? In London and Po, I, uh, I, I was thinking that I'm able to win and maybe I wanted too much to win and that's why I missed gates and this time I was concentrated on having fun and it was working so well done Stephanie gold medal congratulations thank you very much well it looked like she was having fun on that run and uh, as she came down and uh, when she finished you could see what it meant to her yeah for sure um, she's spent a lot of time being the fastest in the heats and the semis uh, it's super cool to see her winning a world cup finally yeah, good to see Martina Wegman of the Netherlands coming in to the top six. She finishes sixth place and, uh, well, good performance for her. And, uh, well, that's the third race of the World Cup season completed for the men's C1 and the women's K1. And they'll all be taking away various things. Some of the under-23s will be in action in the championships over the break and then everyone will be coming back really really focused into those last couple of world cups and then of course the world championships and olympic qualifiers yeah in one week we have the under 23 european championships in litovsky nikolas and then in uh, two weeks after that the world championships for the under 23 teams in krakow of course the world cup will be back in uh, well at the end of august from Markleburg in Germany and then it goes to Prague for the final in the beginning of September and then the World Championships in Laseo d'Orel in Spain but uh, we're clearly not done with racing because we've got the 
women's C1 and the men's K1 in action tomorrow. And, uh, well, it, the tightness of the racing today suggests that we are up for some superb racing uh, in tomorrow's race. But uh, we should hopefully get an indication of the overall World Cup standings after three races. And as I was just thinking, Karina Kunler, the winner from last weekend and fourth today, takes the early lead. But Ava Tursel and Karina are well ahead of the others. Veronica Wojcova, Ricardo Funk, Jessica Fox, who was the surprise person, didn't come through to the final. But it is Karina Kunla who will uh, go into the summer break with a uh, comfortable lead in the overall World Cup standings. Yeah, she can be super soaked with her season so far. Um, you know, this pre-Olympic year, we always see some exceptional paddling because everyone's preparing uh, for next season, making sure that they're finely tuned and uh, just seeing what they can do right now. And a lot of these races this season are working as Olympic selection for a lot of nations. Well, two gold medals for Italy, two silver medals for Slovenia, and then a bronze medal for Slovakia in the men's C1, and a bronze medal for the Ukraine in the women's K1. That uh, concludes the action here on the Sava River for today, here in Ljubljana in Slovenia. The sun is shining and the stage is set, and we've uh, got semi-final and final action tomorrow morning that gets underway at nine o'clock central european time and then the finals 12 o'clock central european time so thank you for joining me amber in the commentary box from myself andy maddock and amber maslin we'll see you tomorrow thanks andy take it easy